things out in society, particularly we're looking at companies here, but just thinking about yourself, doing analysis on yourself, intelligent people in college analyzing your own life. What have you observed coming up or changes that you're gonna make for yourself? Are you making those changes based off whatever factors are outside, external factors? Because you guys are getting ready to graduate. What are some of the changes you hope to make as you gear towards graduation, either before or after? And tell me about this thoughts you get, the analysis, how do you feel included some of this stuff? Right, you guys all can't just be waiting to just graduate and that's it. What's the plan? Before or after, yes? What exactly are you asking again? I'm asking analyzing your own life as you come towards graduation, as you're near towards graduation. What are some of the changes you are going to make either before or after? And why are you making those changes based on what factors? Probably uh, work on my time management skills. Okay, tell me about that. Uh, sometimes I have to do more, like, or I make more decisions with, like, the time I have. Like, I'll just sit down and get on my phone or, like, for a long time. So I'll just be, like, doing something else. Or I'll wake up late when I don't need to be waking up late. Stuff like that. And it's impacted your life negatively, right? It has, yeah. Okay. In what ways? Grades or just uh, relationships? Or? Just a little bit of everything, like, Okay, excellent. I think that's a good observation about self and why it impacts you negatively or positively in some form or fashion. Anybody else? Yes. Um, kind of going along the same kind of time in with Jane, uh, just starting to adjust to life like outside of sports as like graduation is a little bit closer. Um, I mean, I've played sports with my entire life. So you're looking at alternatives and substitutes, right? Because in sports, you're coming out of college, playing sports. Is sports going to lead you to any sort of professional? Uh, not really. Okay. All right. So a little bit of real, real world analysis about like things you've done and how they may not end up the way you want to. I'm pretty sure you would love to play professional sports. Of course. Yes. Um, I would say my procrastination is a big one for me because. I normally don't see things like until like I have to do it. So like it kind of like it like kind of works hand in hand for me because I like work a lot better like when I know I have to do it instead of like working ahead. So like I'll wait till like if something's due at midnight, I'll wait till like 11 o'clock or something to turn it in just because I just know like it's due and I have to do it at that point. So like I just don't like do it beforehand or something like that. So I would say that's probably a big one. Yeah, I think procrastination is a big one for a lot of people. We all think we got more time than we actually have. No wonder we wake up and like, shoulda, coulda, woulda. You know, so. Anybody else want to contribute? Yes? I'd say probably uh, kind of like piggybacking off what he said um, a bit, but more just preparing for life outside of school because um, I don't really have that much work experience and Unfortunately, I do have about at least a semester left, so at some point I'm going to try to at least uh, prepare myself for something in the summer and eventually for after college, um, just so transition from college into uh, more of a work life is not as, you know, a long way. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, after college, I want to, excuse me, after college, I just want to build more connections because as we kind of talked about last week, when you apply for jobs, it helps to at least have at least like a, an open door kind of thing or somebody who can open the door for you um, to do a business with you. Yeah, absolutely. Keep an open mind. What's the point of this? Hey, you can say, hey, Professor Ross, you know, I've actually uh, done some research and I think I'm going to move to Texas.
job market my, my particular field is seems to be better there I probably have better opportunities securing a job there lower taxes right better quality of life Th these things kind of matter right so that sort of in-depth analysis would be like well those are significant changes based on a lot of external forces you're not in control over, right? The job market, are they hiring people in Chicago for their job? How difficult is it gonna be? Should you relocate to have a better quality of life? Will the money go further there, right? Because <clears throat> even though you could go to San Francisco, and I know people in San Francisco make like three times what they made in Chicago, as typically are raised. Be like, awesome, I made you know, X amount of money and these people I know still live in garages. They work in Silicon Valley, they work for Google, Apple, and Facebook. So it just goes to show that even though the money translates to, hey, I have a higher income, the cost of living in these places, you know, if you didn't do a good analysis on that, you're gonna end up being struggling just as you go to Chicago. You might actually be better off Chicago. Right? So the point is think, think deeply as you move towards graduation. Is what I'm trying to do conducive for my environment here? Is this the only place to do it? Yeah. Right? What are some other alternatives if this does not work out? Right? There's some people force things to work out and they never work out and they end up just wasting a ton of time. So I want to always try to make things a little bit personal before we get into all of this competitiveness, globalization, all the big, big, big talks of strategy. But the point is to apply strategy to your life, looking at what's happening, and you can better understand this stuff very, very easily. Because things are changing. And the stuff we'll talk about today impacts us all. It's going to all change us in the future. It changes how we behave. Yeah, and the other thing was a lot of people in the, in the course, um, sim gauge was an issue. I think you had to pay extra money get access, a lot of people had already purchased the book or something without much education, so I know that that would be an issue too. All right, chapter two, external environment, right? Opportunity, stress, industry, competition, competitor analysis, all stuff that we're gonna deal with as we address these cases and we look at businesses we wanna analyze. These are all things that are shaping the way we should react. Remember I talked uh, a while back about first mover. I said typically who moves first gets all the investor money and becomes the biggest company, right? Because everybody wants to get in early. But what are some of the benefits of not moving first? Some of the benefits of moving second or third? You can pretty much let someone do all the work for developing something new and take what they found and find it make it even better, especially if they uh, fail at first. Excellent, the work is done. Not completely done, but like the research is done, right? They've invested a lot of time, money, people, resources into this. Now I have to do is access what, you know, capitalize on what they've already done, but do something different with it, right? And this is how we analyze competition. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. We just gotta look at what the top people are doing, replicate it, but in our own unique branding sort of way. Somebody else was gonna say something. Just to go over that, like if they fail, you can see if it worked or not. If it doesn't go the way you want it to, you didn't have to take that risk in the first place. So yeah. you see a lot of time, money, money, energy, resources, stuff like that. So. Yeah, so you see the reaction. Like, hey, you see whoever, they did this new thing. Now I'm gonna wait a few months to see the reaction, right? The buyers, is there high demand for it or did they waste their money, right? Did they waste their money on this? Or is it the high demand for me to come up after them and also follow in the footsteps? This happens in every industry, right? You can think of this as opposition research if you're a politician, right? If you're trying to see what your opponent, get all the dirt, all the stuff. So you wait, right? You wait before you react. Or you wait for them to make a statement so you can counteract that statement, right? Or you'd be the first one to make the statement so that you get in front of everybody and everybody start believing you first. <clears throat> so it applies all walks of life, but here we're talking about business. All right, external environment. We got economic, sustainable, physical, demographic, sociocultural. I understand why this thing shakes. Because 
just feel like this screen is shaking. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Social cultural, political, legal, technological, global, right? And here we had a competitors was political, legal, technological, global. Um, economic. What are some things we should be analyzing economically in our external environment if we're running the business or going to start a business or look into it? Or we have a, a business and we're trying to grow it. What are some of the things that are going to shape our business happening in the economic environment? One thing would be like to analyze supply chain issues, see if we can get stuff and stock, everything that needs built. Yeah, sure. It could be existing companies, you know, in that um, area that supply you with goods, right? What are uh, some other things? Think of bigger than that. Yes. Inflation. Yeah. Right. So you look at, hey, let me look at this particular country and see what the rate of inflation is, because that is huge, right? The value of our dollar at this particular time will impact our bottom line. Whatever decisions we make. Should we make a decision in this country or should we move and look elsewhere? This country is not the only place to do business, whatever country that may be, right? Um, what about demographic? What does demographic entail? Hmm? The area? Yeah, but what are some of the factors? What are some of the, um, the factors in there? It can be like people, age. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're looking at anything to start a business, and I ask you, hey, where'd you put your business at? You might have put it over here on this corner, right? I'm like, what's the demographic over here? You might, I put it over here for a reason. I did research. Here. It's the ethnic reason, uh, ethnic reason, right? Like I put a Polish restaurant over in a Polish community because there's Polish demand for this Polish product, right? Or for other reasons say, hey, I put something because senior citizens, we have a larger, um, older population in this area, and there are services needed for these people in this area, right? This age demographic is needed. Or if you say, hey, Professor Ross, I put this luxury, luxury, luxury thing over here. Why? Because people got money in this area. They're young, they're starting out their cool jobs, they have a lot of expendable income, right? They're buying condos, they're buying houses, those are some of the demographics, uh, external factors you're going to look at in order to form good decisions on what to do. Uh, Socio-cultural, who could just give me a random example? Or what is socio -cultural? How can we describe something socio-cultural in business? I think we could just simply say, hey, what is valuable to people over here? Right? What has value to people over here? Whether it's religious beliefs, different colors, right? Um, different symbols, different items, products, things like that. Right? What do people value over in this area? Political, legal, any thoughts? Yeah, pretty much like any laws that might affect your business. Yeah, absolutely, right? Any laws that's gonna affect your business. Hey, what are some things that's changing that's really gonna hurt my bottom line? Or it's gonna stop me from even starting a new business over here. Or it's gonna stop me, it's gonna hurt me with competition. Maybe this benefits a competitor more than it would benefit me. Think of that, right? Uh, technological thoughts. What's like the technological factors out there? Probably all the technology that's available now, and all the technology that. Yeah, absolutely. The ones that's available now and the ones emerging, right? Things that are coming about. Why? Because guess what? It's going to change our behavior whether we like it or not, right? So whoever adapts to it first, 
with a clear com competitor advantage to it. Whoever doesn't adapt the technology and try to wait and be a laggard, right, and take their time, they're gonna fall back and they're not gonna be competitive. So we're looking at things emerging. So I can ask you questions like, hey, what is your observation? You look out to the world, what are some things you see technologically or online or social media that you think are gonna change the way people behave? Anybody? What are some observations online or out in the world or on the internet or on these apps that you see are kind of slightly changing but it's making a big impact to allow people to change it or think or whatever? Or the use of like AI? Absolutely, right? But have you, where have you seen it? Have you seen it in a particular place or with apps or online or something like that? I've seen it like in store, online. Like you want specifics? Yeah, like where, just give them random things. So uh, just the use of, well AI like answering questions or like carrying out your, your task for you. Yeah, absolutely. Like sometimes you go, even on these websites, and you're like, oh, there's a chat platform, right? There's not a person chatting with you, right? It could be completely automated. It's already programmed to respond to certain questions that you have a certain way, right? I mean, you call t uh, telephone prompts. You could call some place, and all of the prompts and the voice speaking to you is artificial intelligence, right? It's already programmed. It's not a human that actually uh, talks to it. Where else, what else have we seen? What's a, what's a big one? What's a big app that we think is shaping people's lives right now? Okay, right, so obvious one is TikTok, right? TikTok is definitely changing, even for the people who try to resist TikTok. It's like, oh, I don't wanna go to TikTok, it's stupid, whatever. People are beginning to share more things, right? Your family, your friends, eventually you fall into the fold of TikTok because it's being shared to you, right? And on TikTok, you're finding new ways to do things, new hacks, new information, and obviously the funny stuff that you try to look out for, the silly stuff like that. So those are things that are definitely shaping, technologically shaping the way we do business, you know, and how we behave and think. And global, what could global mean all together? Yeah, but what about what's happening internationally? Like, what are the big things that shape change internationally? Like wars and stuff, potentially? Yeah, absolutely. You can think, well, conflicts, right? Hey, does the war in Ukraine shape gas prices? And does gas prices affect a billion different companies, right? Does gas prices affect a billion different people, right? To get to school, to get to work, all these different things. So conflicts, yes, you will observe a conflict to say like, man, how is this gonna hurt my bottom line? I gotta jack up prices because now it costs more money to get the prices here to sell it to people, right? So regardless, it's gonna impact you. The other major thing is emerging markets. Um, as you see bigger players come onto the scene. I think, was it this class that we talked about, Saudi Arabia and uh, investing? What was it called? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Saudi Arabia is potentially, you know, coming to WWE, you know, what you think is an American thing, right? And so, yeah, Saudi Arabia has always had money, but they've never started really looking at American companies. Things are starting to shift and change, right? China's starting to buy up some really, really, quote unquote, American companies. You know, the government tries to resist and uh, create new legislation to try to stop them so that Americans can own American companies. They can't because money counts. Money matters, everything. So if you're gonna make a ton of money off it, and if you make a lot of Americans make a ton of money off it, then it's gonna go through. So these are the seven dimensions, right? Um, let me go back, I think we skipped. Sustainable physical environment. Sustainable physical environment. What are some of those things you could think of? It could, yeah, it could be some of the activities you do, right? So maybe you've got renewable energy, sustainable energy. Hey, is this uh, particular country doing renewable things? 
Are you transferring to more electric things since we have to shift and make all of our changes? Do they have access to adequate water and other resources, or do they do not? Uh, so this is the general environment, which is composed of seven uh, dimensions, as they call it. And you'll be looking at things and using them as you make your analysis throughout the course, right? Just looking at big things. And none of this stuff is new. I'm pretty sure you heard of PESL. You guys probably have PESL, right? Political, economic, sociocultural, technical. The same stuff. We just added a couple more things here. Um, a PESL analysis. So there's an overview of demographic, population, age structure. Let me let me do let me look up something real quick to just see a contrast, right? For decision making. Let's say in real estate. Well, I work in real estate, right? I buy property. So let's see. Let's check this out. Anybody familiar with Lincoln Park in Chicago? Yes? No? Here's some of the demographics of Lincoln Park. Let's see if we can get some of the uh, income statistics. Average household income, right, in Lincoln Park, $191,000, right? That's pretty good, right? I mean, if there's two people in the house, practically people are making $100,000. So let's do a contrast and look up. Um, what's another neighborhood we can find that's a high contrast to that? Austin. All right. So Austin neighborhood, Chicago. Which is not far from here, right? <laughs> All right, there we go, Austin, Chicago, right? Can you see the income average? Medium household income. So think of that, just, we're talking the same exact city. This is the same city. And if you're making a decision on where to put a business, you're making a decision on buying some property as an investment, et cetera, et cetera. You guys, this one almost hit 200 grand. This one only get 31 grand for the entire household. So you could have two people in that house, right? Completely different demographics. That's just demographics. Right? Not even considering politically all the other uh, things about that. But that's just give a real world example, because you could do that for different countries. Or counties, or states, what have you. So demographic, population sign, income distribution, ethnic mix, right? economic inflation rates, interest rates, trade deficits, political, legal, antitrust, taxation laws, um, Sociocultural, here they have women in the workforce. Uh, workforce diversity, attitudes about the quality of work life, really important. I think this one is always overlooked. Attitudes about the quality of work life. <clears throat> Tech. Tech is really just new knowledge, right? The application of new knowledge, right? We've been 
increase, we start creating some new knowledge and now people are gonna apply it to products, to services and be able to make it useful. Right, global is important, political events like the Civil War, critical global markets, right? Understanding who's the major player in the global markets, new emerging economies, industrialized, um, the sustainable energy consumption, renewable energy effort, and availability of water, things like this. Is that all pretty easy to understand? So that's the general environment. Now we look at the industry. Set of factors that directly influence a firm and competitive actions and responses. Remember, we're here, we're trying to observe what our competitors are gonna do so we can beat them at this game, right? We're trying to get close to it and try to have as much uh, return as possible. You guys heard of all this, right? We look at uh, SWOT analysis, threat of new entrants, power of suppliers, power of buyers, product substitute competing with firms, and how you gather all that information interpreters call competitor analysis, which we're gonna be doing in this class, right? Really taking all the stuff you probably are along with SWAT and Tesla and using it all together to create a competitor analysis. Um, and this all impacts a company's vision, mission, choice of strategies, competitive actions and responses it will take to implement those strategies. So once again, for the people talking about they want to start a new business, this is probably research you should conduct before starting the new business, right? These are things you probably should analyze that's gonna mold this. This doesn't just come from anything. You can't just come off an emotional appeal saying this is what I want the vision and mission to do. First comes an analysis first, and then you want to mold all of this to kind of what you're trying to achieve, right? that's what a good business will do from the beginning. And it'll change over time. So here we're focusing on factors and conditions that influence profitability potential and focus on predicting uh, competitors' actions. So you can predict very easily just by some of the simple observations we talked about, let's say TikTok. You can kind of predict how things are gonna go kind of what new outlets are gonna pop up because of TikTok, or a new competitor towards TikTok, right? So you can kind of predict what's gonna happen in the future and get a, a hold on it. And you're gonna use sort of these external analysis um, tools to do it. Scanning, monitoring, forecasting. What do we think scanning is? Scanning your environment. What are you looking for? I think we're just in a military to scan an environment. What are you looking for? Potential threats. Yeah, we're looking at potential threats, right? You're looking at things that are not normal. You're looking at things that seems to be changing a little bit. You're looking at oddities, right? Monitoring, what would that encompass? To see what's changing. Yeah, to see exactly the, the relevance of why things change, right? What's the meaning, why are things changing? What does that say about the environment that things are changing? That means everybody got, that means a lot of people have to get on board with the change. What does that say about the actual meaning that's happening? with what's changing, right? Let me ask you this. Looking at um, your experience here in college and at Concordia, since you've entered college up to now, what has changed? What have been some of the changes from when you first showed up to now? Sure, what, fourth year? There have to be some changes. What, yes? So uh, I started in fall 2020 and y'all know COVID, so everything was online, but now everything is totally out of the world. Restrictions are being lifted, um, even though we are recovering from COVID. Yeah, so you've seen it. Well, you saw a major uh, impact with COVID, right? We could fly that, we break hit, we saw a global change. It wasn't a war, but it kind of looked like it, right? It shut things down. Um, 
from that, everybody had to change, right? All the behavior changed, people lost a lot of money, business had to do things differently, right? Switch it up, run off with some new stuff, if not, our business won't survive, right? They even thinking here with school, hey, everybody's gonna go back to online, but are people actually learning online, right? Is it really impactful? And we probably gotta increase the platforms we use online, because they may be outdated and old, Right? You gotta be more interactive. Hey, guess what? We'll use Zoom for our classes, right? Put people in the groups. Hey, we'll go talk in this group, this group. You gotta increase the technology in some way. Anybody else? What has changed since you showed up? The, well, when I, my, I started out fall 2022, or fall 2022, well, uh, the cafeteria I guess now is like they really upgraded it, I think after 2020, 2020, 2020 we had uh, like pretty much all we wanted uh, versus the old cafeteria What do you uh, what do you think the benefit of them investing in three million dollars in the cafeteria is I mean like for like coaches and stuff whenever they're uh, recruiting or visits and when they have a lot more space to kind of show uh, or potential new students, like this is what, uh, like this is where you can eat, you can talk to people, you can sit here and watch TV, and stuff like that. And then it just makes the, it just gives it like a new look, just like I said, for anyone to anybody from the outside who's a potential visiting college to make it more easier. Yeah, absolutely. I think about the, the universities are competing. You don't, I also work at Dominican, you know, I teach at Dominican, and you don't think they're competing with Concordia, right? There's something that happens at Dominican, there's some real investment, maybe they build a theater hall or something. That Concordia is not looking at that today. Hey, we need to do it too. We need to update these classrooms, right? Because over there, Dominican might be some fresh new stuff, very innovative, integrative, different ways of doing things. They're competing. <coughs> I think I talked about this in one of my other classes, but besides taking your money as students, where do most of the not-for-profit not schools get their funding to buy billion-dollar facilities? Billion-dollar facilities. Fundraising? Hmm? Fundraising? Or people giving back to the schools? Giving back, right? Endowments, right? And so the, the schools want you to do well, right? You're an outlet, because this relates to the course too. You are an outlet. What they put in is maybe Professor Ross, maybe the classroom, the materials, whatever, the name of the course, how interesting the course will be, if it's relevant to anything in society. But you're the final output. So if those outputs aren't good, those outputs don't contribute back to the school as alumni, right? Hence why if you Google, somebody Google Harvest Endowment for me, please. Isn't it close to a billion dollars? Google, see what it is. typically is even higher than that. Fifty billion dollars in a bad economy. When I, when I've seen it in a well in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Endowment means that the people who graduated from the school gave back fifty billion dollars so that Harvard could build up whatever it wants to do, right? New programs, stuff like that. So here at Concordia, yeah, there is an they are placing an investment so that you can do well and want to give back. Maybe some of you will be so successful, you'll give back and they'll name the business school after you. No longer be the college of business, be such and such school of business, right? We see that happening all over the time. <clears throat> but yeah, that's just another observation of how all this stuff interacts with the environment because the school's competing, you guys are competing amongst each other in the job markets. This all relates to the same thing, right? And assessing just has to do with analysis. 
Um, so scanning, identifying early signals <coughs> is important. Can you see the changes? People who don't see the changes get left behind. Monitoring, detecting meaning through ongoing observation. What does this mean? What is this going to mean for the future, right? Why are things changing? What is it going to mean? Once again, the people who are ahead of the curve will be ahead of the curve. The people who do not detect the meaning will fall behind. Forecasting, developing projections. I think of when you have your companies, right? A lot of companies, if you're starting from the ground, you could do a pro forma statement. Let's say you get to the point of your business plan to show financials, right? You show how much money you actually have to invest in the company yourself. Maybe money from potential, you know, outside investors, real ones. And then you have a pro forma, which is just a projection, made up numbers, right? You made up numbers, but hopefully they're good made up numbers, right? They actually make sense according to the market. They develop projections of anticipated. What do you anticipate? Anticipated outcomes based on changes and trends in the market. And finally, assessing, the, determining the timing and importance of environmental changes and trends. Is it the right time to do something, right? Is it the right time? Should we wait? Should we postpone? Should we pull the trigger? Should we do it now? You already know this, what opportunity and threat is. Um, <clears throat> All right, population size, right? Big one. It's projected that population growth will continue in the 21st century by a slower pace. Firms may want to recognize the market potential that may exist for them in the following five nations, which are expected to be the most populous nations in the world by 2050. India will be number one. China will be number two. United States, I'm not even so sure about that number. We have a very slow, our growth rate is, is uh, declining and very slow. So who knows what will be next. But these are the most interesting markets and you think of why are more Americans trying to invest in India and China and still trying to invest in the US when clearly these countries are gonna be taken over. Right? They're going to be taken up. So what can we do to maximize our growth and not just constantly look at America? Here's another example. Uh, we're talking demographics, geographic distribution. So in the U.S., the shift from states in the Northwest and Great Lakes regions to states in the West, South, and Southwest. Basically means a lot of people are leaving Chicago. <clears throat> A lot of people are leaving Chicago. A lot of people are leaving the Northeast. And they're transitioning, taking their businesses down to Florida, to Texas, California, Arizona, things like that. Why? Because the, the environment there legally, when it comes to taxes, things like that, they're more conducive. Men have to pay a corporate tax. Some people may not have to pay an income tax at all down those places, right? So things are shifting. Therefore, how do you make the best decision with what you guys are gonna do in the future about where you wanna live? Because I'm not sure this is the greatest place to live unless you have a significant amount of money. Time, let's do a real time. Four to three seconds. Okay. We'll end it off here. Uh, ethnic mix of countries' populations continue to change. Um, here's an example. The increase in Hispanic population in the United States. Eventually, Hispanics will be the majority at some point in the future. What does that mean for companies? How they will change? How they're going to market? Right? Um, so that's a huge change. Consumer needs, the labor force composition, income distribution. Across, here's an example of the rise in domestic consumption of consumer goods by India's middle class has positioned it as a market of interest, right? Basically, if you have a strong middle class, you have a great country, right? And India's middle class is expanding, which is a sign, a signal for us to interpret like, man, they're doing very, very well. Same goes here. When we have a very strong and robust middle class, the U.S. is doing good, 
when we do not, when it's just a bunch of people in the top 10% getting way more wealth, and the people in the middle class are shrinking, more people are coming forward and just saying, hey, that's probably not the best place to invest in or do a business. So these are just key signals to look out to try to understand some of the companies we look for to be like, hey, why are they making those decisions that they're making, right? Why are they doing what they're doing? Where else are they looking to beyond this place? Um, I'll end it off there, and I will open up uh, later, I'll open up the discussions on Black Horse, so you kind of try to get, select, you know, first come, first serve on the cases. Look through the cases on the syllabus, see which company is more attractive to you. And then um, hopefully by Friday we have two presenters ready to go. Sound good?